Hey guys, what's up? First of all, before I go any further, I just want to say thank you to all of you who posted so many great comments and video responses to the Why Are So Many DJs Broke video. I think there are 100 comments on there so far, or over 100 comments, and 7 video responses. And if you haven't seen this video, please go back one and check it out, read through the comments, watch the video responses, and comment and post videos if you'd like. That's still completely open. Please, I want to hear what you have to say. And uh, if you happen to see a lot of thumbs down or somebody who doesn't have a thumbs up on a good comment, give them a thumbs up. Some jokesters going through and giving everybody a thumbs down, some haters. So uh, let's show them what we're made of as a community and get some thumbs up going on those, uh, those good comments. Now understand that I know what the difference is between a hobby DJ and a working, say, mobile DJ. A lot of you hobby DJs out there are turntablists, maybe hip-hop DJs, house DJs, you're not seeing a lot of return for your investment. But the reason this is, is because number one, this is a hobby for you. You're doing it because you love it. It's not necessarily a business. You're involved in a hobby that sometimes you can get a little money back with when you go out and you play live. Some hobby DJs are spinning raves and clubs. Maybe you're making 100 bucks, 150 bucks, sometimes less, maybe 50 bucks going out and performing. But it doesn't really matter because this isn't a business venture for you. It's something you love to do and keep on doing it. Then you've got your working DJs, which uh, most of us are mobile DJs. I'm a mobile DJ, so that's what I'm going to kind of focus on in the videos to come. A lot of us are full-time. A lot of us are part-time. And uh, we need some help. And I'm going to try to help. These are only my thoughts, ideas, and opinions. This is not gospel. Please never think that with any of my videos. Take it or leave it. But these are my thoughts, and these are some ideas that I have that might help some of us, not all of us. Out of all the comments and video responses, the number one reason why you thought DJs are so broke right now is the economy. And there's definitely some truth to that. The economy is definitely in a mess. And it's not just America, it's not just Europe, it's globally. It's everywhere. Some places are hit harder than others. But uh, understand that this is not the Great Depression of the 1930s. There aren't soup lines, people living in tents, and things like that in most parts of the world. This is a recession. What's happening is, is that costs are up on certain things, so, and people aren't necessarily making more money, so they have to make cutbacks. For instance, gas at $4 a gallon in the United States is a lot higher than it was a few years ago. Now I understand that Europe spends a lot more on gas as does Australia and a lot of other parts of the world but in all fairness there are parts of the world where people pay considerably less for fuel. And if you're not used to budgeting in four dollars a gallon for fuel it's gonna hurt. So what do you gotta do? You gotta make personal cutbacks in your budget. For instance Maybe every day on the way to work, you can't pull over a Starbucks and buy a $4 cup of coffee. It's just not in the budget anymore. Speaking of uh, Starbucks, great example of what I'm about to talk about. Starbucks was doing great a couple of years ago, and they were building stores everywhere. They were putting them in uh, shopping malls, sometimes in grocery stores. Sometimes, I know on Michigan Avenue in Chicago, there are like three Starbucks within a three block radius and maybe there are more and I didn't see them but uh, people have tightened up they can't afford that four dollar cup of coffee anymore there's not that kind of demand right now because a lot of people have to cut back and that's where they're cutting back so Starbucks is in trouble what do they do they've got to close some of their locations people are still buying Starbucks but not as often so uh, it's a little healthy pruning. Some of the stores have to close. Some of them stay open. The better stores stay open. Maybe some of the smaller stores in dumb locations have to close. A lot of economists call this healthy pruning. And uh, this is not going to be a very uh, popular comment with a lot of you, but perhaps in the business of mobile DJing, some healthy pruning is in order. What am I talking about? I'm talking about you 14-year-old upstarts are those of you who have just decided to go to Guitar Center, buy a bunch of gear, and go out and DJ because it's easy. 
Well, you know why DJing looks so easy? Because great DJs make it look easy. That's why. It is not easy. There's a lot involved with being a great DJ. I'm not the best DJ. I'm very competent, though, and I'm confident with that. Why? Well, first of all, I've got some natural ability. Second of all, I've been through the proper training. I worked for mobile systems multi-op mobile systems before I went out and tried to do it on my own. I knew what I was doing before I went out and became a company of my own. I didn't just go buy gear. Uh, gear was the last thing on my mind. It was about performance. It was about value. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But uh, first of all, I do want to say that some of you DJs out there who maybe have been doing it for a little while, you've got a clue, you've got some natural ability, but maybe you're not a great DJ yet. Maybe you're not ready to do big weddings and things like that. You don't necessarily have to hang it up. My suggestion would be to go after some of the budget events. They're definitely out there. Like school dances. They never have a lot of money. Uh, school dances, if you're a young DJ and you think you know how to read a crowd and you think that you've got enough experience to stay in this game, go for it. Check out some school dances. You already kind of know what the kids like. Play to them. Another place that some of you upstarts might do well with, and maybe some of you older upstarts, would be the VFW wedding. Now, if you don't know what a VFW is, it's uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars. It's a private bar slash hall that uh, they actually rent out pretty inexpensively. So some people who just want to get married have a really inexpensive wedding. They only want to spend like $1,000 total. will rent the VFW hall. They'll get a keg of beer and uh, they'll do potluck like uh, sloppy joes or hot dogs and potato chips on paper plates and plastic ware and they'll have a wedding. They don't have a lot of uh, money to spend on a DJ. Maybe this is where you can go ahead and still make a little bit of money with all this gear that you've bought. But most of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about uh, in this video and future videos, it's not going to be for you. And you're not going to be able to hang with some of the concepts that I'm going to throw out there. And uh, hence the, you know, maybe some healthy pruning is in order. The number two culprit was a tie, the way I saw it anyway. First of all, it was a saturation of the market, meaning a lot of upstarts. And part of that was addressed in the last section of this video. And the, the other one that came in, tie for number two, uh, overwhelmingly, was the iPod DJ. Or the DJ being replaced by an iPod. Well, here's the thing, folks. If you really honestly think that you can be replaced with an iPod, you're done. Stop watching this video now. In fact, I suggest you put your DJ gear up on eBay because uh, I can't help you. You've got to be much more than an iPod, and you have to sell that. How do you sell that? You build value in yourself and your services. And uh, this is not just saying, I'm great. This is not talk. This is action. Value is action. You can tell people that you're the best DJ in the world, and some of you do. I've heard you. You want to see something great? Watch me. I got all the answers. I'm the bomb. And that's great. You know what? I love positivity. I don't see it as being an egomaniac. I see it as having a real positive outlook. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Ego is, is what makes you not shoot yourself in the head. It's not always a bad thing. But uh, you got to do better than that. You've got to show me. you got to prove it. How are you going to prove to a client that you just met that you're a better choice than the next guy or you're a better choice than an iPod? Well, that's where you start building value in your services. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. So until then, practice and enjoy.